So just a quick forward. Um, this video will be following multiple grows. The main grow being a ground-based NFT tomato system. I almost didn't post this video because I'm not particularly happy with how the tomatoes turned out, but on editing the video anyway and re-watching, I think there's some valuable lessons to be learned from the mistakes that I made and the things that led to the result that I got. I also take pride in the fact that the channel is about showing the failures as well as the successes because without the failures, there wouldn't be that much content anyway. So enjoy the multiple grows and time lapses. Welcome back to Who Chose. Today on Who Chose, I'm going to show you how to set up and run this. This is a ground-based NFT with beefsteak tomatoes, which is run from a self-refilling reservoir, allowing you to grow tomatoes without any grow media. And these, these are micro tomatoes in a raised NFT, allowing you to grow tomatoes in a small footprint, but still within a nutrient film technique system. Okay, so sometimes hydroponic systems come out of necessity, and this hydroponic system I necessarily needed to be quick and easy to set up and to maintain a lot of plants. So as you can see here, I have a ton of tomato seedlings that are pretty beyond the size of the propagation shelving that I've got. And I need these guys into a hydroponic system. These are beefsteak tomatoes and I'm running out of tomatoes because the last flush of tomatoes that I have is coming through at the moment. And if I don't get these guys in, I'm going to be buying store-bought tomatoes, which sucks. So I'm gonna get these guys into a an NFT system, which I'm just going to throw together because I remember my old system did really well with tomatoes. Um, it was just that it was just an awkward situation because the runs of the NFT were off the ground. And that meant I didn't really have much head height, so they just sort of hung over and they created a real mess. So with this system, I'm actually gonna have it on the ground, utilize the Beto bucket reservoir that I've got already. That will allow us to have it topped up from a float valve within a res that's buried under the ground. So let's get to setting up that system for these tomatoes. So the greenhouse is a bit of a mess at the moment. These channels are actually all full of the cotton bud technique with seedlings in them. They're down within the channels, as you can see here. Now, the reason I'm showing you these cotton wool lettuce is because we'll be revisiting them a bit later to remove them and replace them with our micro tomatoes. And the channels at the moment are protecting the seedlings because the seedlings are down within the channels and it causes a nice humid environment. Nutrient solution is actually really cold. So they're doing really well because it is bloody hot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove all of the stuff that I've got along this wall because this is all being taken over by pests. I actually just found a spider mite infestation in all my tomatoes. And for the NFT rail, I will be using the 90 millimeter piping that I used for my original NFT system with 64 millimeter holes, 300 millimeter spacing between those holes. There's a dog bone down here. Who's been burying dog bones in the greenhouse? Who was this? What is this? Is that you? Okay, off you go. <laughs> There's more, like, is this you? All right, Floki. <laughs> off you go, go on. Out of the greenhouse, don't bury bones in here. That's actually the perfect length. And it's on a downslope, which is perfect as well. What would need to occur here is the pipe coming in from the side here. And because I don't have a connector piece, but I want all of those spacings right up to the end, um, I'm actually going to use a section of pipe with just a T-piece on it uh, to connect the two sections. And that will give me a little bit extra to play with. And then I can have an elbow at the end coming down into my reservoir. Yes, I know you'd put a bone there. Are you looking for more bone? I don't think there is more bone, buddy. I'm gonna put a hole in that shade cloth. <laughs> All right, now I just need to put a hole in it. And push these pieces into place. 
And I'm actually going to glue this one because I just, I can just tell this joint is gonna be problematic. And if the elbow leaks, I can glue that one as well. This is gonna double as a nice little access hatch so that I can clear the roots if I need to. And up this end, I'm just going to pop on an end cap. And this is where we're gonna feed our irrigation from. We've got the irrigation line coming out of the reservoir. The irrigation line that was the Beto buckets, which I've completely removed. So now I'm going to run the irrigation line up to the end of our NFT run. And that is going to supply the end with a 13 millimeter hose. And we're going to have a tap on the hose so that we can control the flow rate. Okay, for this, I'm gonna try my best to keep this hose out of the sun. So I'm gonna run it behind my NFT pipe. Hopefully it's long enough to reach the length of the system. Yes, how good. And if you look down here, I'm just gonna turn it on. Hey, there we go. <laughs> how good. Add in a tap. This is going to allow us to control the flow of water or nutrient to the end of this channel. That will just stick in like so. And now the system is running. Let's see if we can, there we go. How good. That's running perfectly. So this is just water at the moment. And this float valve tops up from my nutrient reservoir. I'm actually going to empty this system out. The way I do that is on this pump, we have two valves um, or taps and if i close the one going to the system and open the one going out the side we have the ability to drain the system and that's what i'm going to do i'm going to drain the system now because i was just filling it with water i'm going to drain it out i'm going to top up my nutrient reservoir with nutrients and it will refill through this float valve. That is what I'm going to do while this drains. <sighs> this is the nutrient reservoir that leads to the float valve. As you can see, it's just got a tap on the bottom and gravity feeds down to that float valve through this tap here. All the other ones are disconnected at the moment. So it's a 1000 liter IBC that I've clad and then I just add nutrient into the top of it when it runs out. If I open it up, you can see the water level. I've only filled it with water and I'll add in my granular nutrient. Over here, I've got a float valve, which is how I top it up. On this side, you can see where I plug in the hose and this will fill up the reservoir and then shut off once it is full. Okay, so I'm now gonna turn on the nutrient, which is at this tap and you should be able to see it come on at this float valve. So I'll reposition you. Just gonna give the nutrients a quick mix. And we'll turn it on. Sweet. And that will fill up to where I've set the float valve, which is just below the holes on the sides. And when that's full, we can turn on our system. Okay, so that's looking about full enough. I reckon the capacity of the system won't be more than what that headroom in that pump is. So I'm gonna turn on the system. I've got water flow up the other end. It should come out the end right about now. There we go. Look at that. And that is the whole system charged and running. So I'll show you what it looks like. As you can see on the bottom, we've actually got quite a lot of water there. Um, so I might even turn that down because you can see there how much uh, water is coming out of that tap and that is gonna cause the uh, nutrient to build up behind the tomato plants uh, when we put them in. All I have to do is turn this down like so and we have a less flow. And you can see what that looks like, a rather nice nutrient film and it actually helps that these pipes are a bit dirty because it helps the water to crawl up the sides a little bit so what i'm going to do now is plant out this system that is cool enough that water which is nice let's go and grab the plants so i've got the plants in the studio the studio is looking really good at the moment i've got heaps of systems on the film a botanium the hydro bucket uh, we've got the tiered hydroponic system We've also got the 3D printable Dutch buckets. So I'm gonna grab those seedlings out of our DIY propagation shelving, and they are well and truly larger than the shelving itself. So let's go and plant these guys. And planting out the system is as easy as pulling out your seedling, 
which looks like this, are actually really light because there's not enough water on those pellets. So, but you can see how all of the roots are air pruned and they're ready to shoot out from the pellet once I place it into system, like so. And don't worry that they fall over because once those pellets get some weight to them, because these ones haven't been watered in too long, I should have watered them, um, they will, I'm gonna do every second hole for now, they will have enough weight to hold the plant up. So, all right, I've got enough for every hole, I reckon. I'm one plant short. That's the perfect amount. I'm pretty happy with that. And now I'm actually going to do myself a favor and I'm gonna string up all the plants. Using my tomato strings, I'm going to connect them all with tomato hooks and tomato clips. And we're gonna hold them all up in that fashion because they're falling all over the place and I don't want them to fall like that. Give myself enough line and then I just clip them up. Now, I think these might be a bit too densely packed, these plants. And if that's the case, I'm going to thin them out. But at this point, I'm just gonna plant them all and see how they go. I've got all the seedlings strung up. They're beefsteak tomato seedlings. They're strung up with tomato clips and tomato hooks. I'll show you the flow rate that I've got it on at the moment. It looks like this, because I don't want the jiffy pellets to back up water. I'm gonna leave it like that. Now it's time to set up the time-lapse cameras and see how they grow. Okay, so I just want to show you what's going on here. Um, as you can see, this is the EC 0 0.02. They've been completely stripping out all the nutrient, but it actually explains why there's not so much growth going on here. I haven't even checked this. I really should check this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the tap here off and here on so I can empty this out. Actually, that is, that is the problem. That is turned off, which means that the backup was running which refills from this water tank, which means that this actually saved them because that would have run dry. These would have died. I'll turn this off and this, oh, wow. Um, I need a backup on my system. So this hasn't moved since I filled it up. Um, let's just take a quick reading. 3.5 millisiemens. And the pH, 5.8. All right, that's perfect. So that's that's the right, that's the right nutrient. So I just forgot to turn it on, let's do that. So that tank has actually saved these plants. Um, they're not producing because obviously, I have no idea how long ago that was. Anyway, so we can turn this on. That, we'll start refilling. Yep, from our primary float valve. This is only meant to be a backup if that runs dry. So that's actually what it did, but I just didn't realize for too long. So we will drain this out like so, and that will fill back up with nutrient. I wonder how much that affected the grow. Anyway, we'll find out. Uh, just give us a quick look at the progress while we're going. Yeah, not too bad. There's a heap of flowers. So 
they look like it's a lighter green than I bike, which is probably due to the lack of nutrients. But no harm, they are a bit leggier, like you can see. The internodal length is a lot longer than um, the, the Dutch bucket tomatoes. I'm probably gonna come along very soon and shuffle them over so that I get some more length. Because you can see here I've cropped all the bottoms because I actually had a spider mite infestation. Um, so I cut all the bottoms off, I treated the spider mites and now they're doing fine. Okay, so we're most of the way through this, well, halfway through this grow because I'm gonna drop and lean these tomatoes until we get some decent tomatoes on them. So what I wanna do is actually wanna start a second NFT experiment uh, with the railed NFT that is above the ground. Now, as you can see, both rails are almost fully taken up with lettuce on one side and a mixture of lettuce and bok choy on the other. So I'm actually gonna clear this lettuce out, I'm going to donate it, I'm just gonna take it to a local business and we can make room for these. These are micro tomatoes and they are, well, they're beyond the propagator and you can see they look beautiful on the roots and they're a really nice compact shape. I'm going to spread these out within this NFT once I get rid of the lettuce. So I'm going to harvest the lettuce and make room for these guys. So I'm just going to remove all the lettuce and these were propagated in the cotton wool technique. So as you can see, there's absolutely no grow media there. It's just the lettuce roots and the cotton wool is completely, well, it's completely gone. It's uh, been taken over by the roots. That's a lot of lettuce. So I'm gonna take this, give it away, and we can fill up with tomatoes. And the way that I'm gonna lay this out is I'm gonna give them as much room as I possibly can. These are really dry. I should have watered them. And the way that I'm laying them out like this it's just going to give them a bit more room to fill out. And this is the result. It's not the fantastic result that I'd hoped for. A little bit because I had given up on it. There is a viral infection that is affecting these tomatoes and it also affected the tomato that I did in the hydro bucket video that I released recently. It had no effect on these tomatoes until the reservoir ran dry of nutrient and was being topped up from my backup with water and for the EC to have dropped so low, I think that it was running on water for a long time, which means that these plants are on life support for a long time. That was the major issue with this grow. I think that this method may actually work uh, even in the 90 millimeter pipe. However, if I were to do it again, I would be using a 100 millimeter pipe just to give the roots a little bit more surface area on top of the water to oxygen exchange, which is how nutrient film technique should work. It would be a stretch to call this nutrient film technique. It is functioning more as a deep flow system. And my experience with deep flow is that it is not as productive as nutrient film technique. However, it still will be productive. As you can see, I have fruit set, all of the plants are flowering and they're surviving. At least some of the fruit is ripening in spite of my terrible management of the system. Over here, we have the micro tomatoes and they're doing extremely well. They are very well suited to a small NFT like this. The roots have rooted completely along the NFT, so that is something to be mindful of. And in between, I've actually planted in some spring onions, which have done rather nicely as well. You can see that there is fruit set within all of these plants. 
and I think this is a fantastic option for people with small amounts of space or indoor NFT systems when it, where you want to grow snacking or salad tomatoes for your family to eat. And there it is. That is the journey that I've been on with Nutrient Film Technique Hydroponic Tomatoes. I hope that you're able to learn from some of my mishaps and failures and from what little success I did have. So that's all for today. Happy hydroponicking and I'll see you next time on Who Chose.